After giving an interview about his public post calling for the killing of Christians, a far-left professor believed he could brag about being affiliated with Antifa without consequences. Unfortunately, he returned to campus to find a major change in his schedule. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. During a brief interview with KCRG, Kirkwood Community College adjunct professor Jeff Klinsman proudly professed, I affirm that I'm Antifa, while insisting that he stands by his calls to kill and bury evangelical Christians because of their influence on the nation. Having seen multiple college administrators come forward in support of the far-left militant group without repercussions, the Iowa professor expected the campus would defend his violent rhetoric and discriminatory leanings. Klinsman had posted on social media that he wanted to see devout Christians slaughtered, citing an anti-Nazi poem that reads, Kill them all and bury them deep in the ground. He then added, It's not pretty and I'm not proud, but seeing what evangelical Christians are doing to this country and its people fills me with rage and a desire to exact revenge. Despite announcing a deep-seated religious bias and incitement to violence, it was looking as if the Iowa College was going to stand by its professor and mislabel the rhetoric as free speech, which campuses are notorious for shutting down. However, just when Klinsman thought he'd gotten away with threatening a large part of the nation and his student body, he received news he never thought he'd hear. Just days after Klinsman's Antifa pledge in defense of calls for anti-Christian hate crimes, he returned to Kirkwood Community College to find that they'd made a decision to remove Mr. Klinsman from the classroom. Not wanting to appear defeated, Klinsman announced that he was resigning, despite the KCC President Lori Sundberg's confirmation that his leaving wasn't voluntary, campus reform reports. With the safety of our students, faculty, and staff as our top concern, we made the decision this morning to identify an instructor who will take over the one course that Mr. Klinsman was to have taught this semester, Sundberg stated. We've spoken with Mr. Klinsman this afternoon about this matter and have accepted his resignation. Sundberg assured the public that there was no evidence that he was espoused those views in class, but she admitted that such beliefs endangered students and faculty members. She concluded the decision was the only logical one and that she has no regrets with removing Klinsman from the classroom. Once the news story ran and we had this outcry from the public and that we perceived as threats, at the end of the day for me, if I'm found legally wrong on this, I can live with that. But if I make a wrong decision regarding the safety of the students and he's harmed, our students are harmed? Our other faculty are harmed? I can't live with that, Sundberg said according to the Gazette. Still, Klinsman won't exit the professional sphere without leaving one final imprint. According to campus officials, the incident involving the pro-Antifa educator has prompted the college to increase security presence, adding that it will also develop and implement a special safety plan. Disturbingly, it seems as though Klinsman isn't done with the college yet. In a letter addressed to the school nonprofit free speech organization, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education claims that the former professor's First Amendment rights were violated when he was forced to step down. Klinsman spoke as a private citizen on matters of public concern, and his speech, not amounting to unlawful true threats or incitement, is protected by the First Amendment. By constructively terminating Klinsman, Kirkwood impressively subordinated his First Amendment rights to the approval of a hostile audience. Of course, their argument is that Klinsman's comments are completely covered by the right to free speech is highly suspect. In fact, the organization's only evidence that his violent and discriminatory rhetoric is legal and within the college's guidelines is that his call to genocide didn't amount to true threats, a claim that is purely subjective. For now, Klinsman remains an unemployed far-left activist, with only his radical political ideology to guide him. Of course, there's always the chance that he'll be welcomed into the classroom by another college. While all speech, no matter how vulgar, extreme, or hateful, should be protected as a constitutional right, this doesn't include calls to violence. Sadly, the only time that these radical extremists like Klinsman are in the defense of speech is when it's their own.